This book took years to write. I'm going to explain it to you in just five minutes and why you need to get a copy of it. So you are here because you're a designer, and we probably agree. We want to have better governments and systems and societies in the world. Why don't we? I'm looking at you. You're a designer. Why isn't it better? Why isn't the organization you're working for making better products and better things? There's a couple of reasons. Number one is talent versus effectiveness. Now, we are trained as designers to think skill and talent is the most important thing. Wrong. <laughs> Not the most important thing. There's no value in being amazingly talented if no one listens to you. So we're trained to believe as designers that we'll be the deciders. We get to decide what the product is, what the vision is, what the budget is. But in most organizations, most of the time, the deciders are other people, project managers, executives, the CEO, head of engineering. So we're really in a role that's an advisory role. We're giving suggestions. We're consultants. We're trying to persuade. But that's not how we're trained. Now, I did some research. Designers agree. The hardest part of doing design work is not crafting. It's not even user research. It's other people. But our mentality and our framework for our work treats this as a secondary problem. So this book says, can't we stop complaining? The complaints might be valid. Let's stop complaining and treat this like a design problem. Then use all of our skills for solving design problems to solve this thing that drives us crazy, that makes us unhappy. Now, we struggle to do this because of what's called, or what I call the ego trap, that we've cultivated a sense that our ideas and our view as designers is obviously the most important view of everything. So we make lots of diagrams and methodologies where the designers are in the center. We assume this is the default for every organization, which is incredibly narcissistic and hubristic. We don't know business. We don't understand politics. We don't understand lots of things that need to be working well for an organization to function. But we show up. We're convinced. We've cultivated a professional culture that assumes great design is always the most important thing. And that makes us easy to ignore because we're always showing up trying to evangelize and convince and persuade. And most people don't want to be persuaded. They already have too many goals. They have too many problems they're trying to solve. And we show up, we're adding more work. We're adding more stress. Now, in the end, I'm convinced there's only three choices. One, get more power. If we really should be the deciders, let's become deciders. Okay, you don't want to be a decider? Become an influencer. Admit you're not the decider. So now your job is to persuade. Now we have three powers inherent to us that we should be using to solve these problems. Curiosity, creativity, and explaining. And the way we can apply these things, this is the heart of the spirit of this book, is to think about our situations. The situations that we talk about and complain about endlessly. Let's apply our design skills to these situations. Every designer should learn to expect these situations to happen. So just a couple of them to whet your appetite for them. Here's a list of some of the ones that are in the book. No one knows what you do. Someone challenges you on a basic fact that you know about aesthetics or user experience design. Sometimes you get a seat at the table and then you discover the people at the seat at the table are crazy and they can't get anything done. So what do you do if decisions are made without you? Don't take it personally. Most people in organizations feel this way. It's not just you as a designer. Instead, ask for feedback. Say, what can I do to add more value so I'm in that room when the decision is made? No one knows what you do. Well, it should be obvious as a designer, there's so few of us in the world. Of course, most people are never going to know by default what you do. We should take this as a, a, as a challenge, as a way to show our curiosity and our ability to educate and inform, which is what we do for users all the time. The book gives you validation, sanity, humor, relief, inspiration, and tactics around the stuff that we've complained about forever. If I've picked your interest at all, go to designishard.com or scottberkin.com. You can join our Substack, lots of free material from the book there, or just go ahead and get the book and be on your way to enjoying your career and your life more than you currently are which is my hope for you and why I work so hard on this project. So good luck to you, and I hope you check it out.